You have exactly what you say. Your words have power and they have life. We're told in the Bible that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Hi, I'm the one that shares with Two Cute Life Lesson. And today we're going to very quickly talk about, we have to be careful about what we say. We have to watch our mouth, watch our words. So what we're going to talk about is the importance of not just saying idle words. Because the Bible also tells us that we're going to give an account for every idle word that comes out of our mouth. So we have to be intentional about what we're saying. When we're talking to our children, we can't just tell them that they're worthless or they're not going to amount to anything or, you know, you're just not doing what I need you to do. That may be possible. You know, it may be true. However, we need to begin to speak positively about them. We need to begin to build them up. And this way, we're going to start to see a change in them because we're going to begin to bring into life the things that we say. So as we're constantly telling our kids, you're not worth anything. You're not going to mount anything. All these words are creating a reality. And it, I know as Christians, we realize that there are two separate worlds. There is the physical world in which we physically live in. And there is the spiritual world in which our soul resides. And we are told that we, it says, calling those things that be not as though they were. So whatever we're speaking physically is what we're going to bring to pass in the spirit realm by our words, this very thing. You know, we're also told that this little tongue, it's, it's a small thing, but it talks about how it influences so much. And the comparison that was made in the Bible was to the bit or whatever that little thing is on ships, how it's a small piece and it turns a big ship. Well, our mouth is the same way. It's a small thing, but it, nev it navigates, it turns. It is the turning factor in situations and circumstances and not just with our kids, with our job. We have to begin to have a spirit of gratitude. We have to begin to have a spirit of thanksgiving. Our job is not going to get any better until we begin to speak better about our jobs. To thank God for that job. Because remember, there are people that don't have a job. And begin to talk positively about our jobs. So we come home every day instead of talking about or complaining about what didn't go right to, you know, today or that day at work. We need to focus on at least find at least one or two things that happened that were good and begin to talk about them, begin to focus on them, begin to adopt that spirit of gratitude, that spirit of thanksgiving. And then as we bless that job, as we thank God for that one, he'll begin to give us more. He'll give us or lead us to the job in which we need to have. Because when we're grateful, when we speak with gratitude, we are putting things into motion in the spirit realm. We're letting God know that we're thankful for what he's already given us. You know, we're told not to despise the day of small beginnings. So that may be our day of small beginnings. And he's going to work with us and move us to something better. So as we begin to speak, um, speak life. We need to speak life into our job. We need to speak life into our marriages. We don't need to just berate our spouses every time they come on. And they may not be the world's best spouse. But it is up to us as as Christians to begin to speak words of, of, of love and kindness because there's a reason you married that person. You know, you may not still have that same love and feeling that you had in the beginning, but as you begin to talk positively about them, begin to build them up. You know, let's be honest. When people brag on you, you're going to do a little more than you would if they're talking down on you. If they're talking about, oh, she's so smart. Guess what? I'm going to work harder to be smart. I'm going to work harder to be the person they expect me to be. So if somebody's saying negative things about you, you're not going to hurt yourself to do anything better. I talked to a coach one time. Uh, I'm a big basketball component. And if you watch my other channel, then you know I'm a big basketball fan. So um, I had this coach. He was saying, oh, y'all just, you don't want nothing. You don't. And I said, God, he's so negative. And I asked him, I said, why are you so negative? You know, even with conversations with me, he would say things that were, I thought were derogatory. You know, it would just be like off the wall. And he said, well, I was taught that if you tell a person, you know, you pop them up and you, you talk about, you know, you talk about them in a negative light, then they're going to work harder to do the positive thing to, to create the action that you want. I said, I'm not trying to be ugly, but to me, that has the opposite effect. And I know what me it does. So I don't know if that really worked with him as far as basketball went, as far as motivating his uh, team to play. Uh, they did okay, but I sometimes wonder if he had been a little more positive would they have played better because the coach was expecting better from them. So 
when we are speaking things, we need to speak positively. We need to encourage people. We need to build them up. We need to speak good things into existence. Don't, don't buy into the negative. Maybe you need to cut the television off, cut the radio off, stop listening to the news for a while and begin to absorb positive things. And then we'll see a change come. We speak, we speak our lives, our futures into existence. So we have to be careful what we're saying. So um, this is the one that shows the two cute life lessons. And I thank you guys for listening. And be sure to give this video a like, a thumbs up to comment. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.